How do you feel about Tanks Bigsby uh, versus Travis Etienne? I know we've we had some conversations in our Discord or Patreon over these two. It's a hot question. People want to know, well, what does this do to the ceiling of Travis Etienne? And does Tank Bigsby have any value on his own or is it strictly contingent? I like Tank. Um, I, I think, again, this draft for all of the knocks that it took in terms of like ceiling talent for a lot of these guys, a lot of these guys really landed into some of the best possible situations that we could have predicted. And I think there's not a better team for tank to have landed on than Jacksonville. Um, I think there's a good chance the way I kind of described it was think, you know, uh, imagine ETN is kind of early career Zeke, you know, he's the main rushing guy. He's still going to get his targets. He's going to be on the field quite a bit, but, but Tank is going to be kind of that Pollard guy. You know, he's, he's fast, but he's not the fastest guy on the field. Pretty good receiver, uh, maybe misused a little bit in college, maybe not, you know, the full profile that we want to see. But he's a guy who is going to have a pretty significant role in this offense. They like to rotate backs. We saw that last year at times with Jermichael Hasty getting decent amount of play. You know, that's why we were taking speculative shots on Snoop Connor last year, you know, and Tank is a better player than than either Hasty or Connor uh, has ever really shown to be, in my opinion. So I really like him. Um, I really think you again. He falls, you know, I, two six and later. I'm 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 comfortable taking him. I think the upside there, you know, is enough. You know, Pollard was a flex worthy guy for a few years, even with Zeke being, you know, when Zeke was Zeke before it kind of flipped, and you know now Zeke is the one that's the kind of the bane of Pollard managers for the for the last year or so. Um, but you know, I, Tank could be the reason that ETN doesn't get a second contract contract in Jacksonville. You know, uh, he's already burnt a year from injury. He's heading into year three. After this year, they're going to have to decide if they want to use that uh, that fifth year option on him. And they may not. They may see Tank and may see him as good enough and roll with him with a pretty big role there. So again, once you hit a, a certain point, you know, we're taking the speculative shots. And I don't think you can really make an argument for uh, uh, pretty much anybody else who's consistently falling to the late second, early third uh, to not have the upside of Tank Big, big Speed. Yeah, it's interesting. It's funny because when I'm looking at those two players versus the Dallas backfield that you're bringing up, I feel like Tank Bigsby is more like a budget Zeke closer than he is of a Tony yeah. Pollard, where he's kind of he's got good good enough size and he can do a little bit of everything. Um, of course, I said budget because he's not particularly uh, close to Zeke in terms of talent, or <laughs> especially as much as Zeke was coming out. Um, where Travis Etienne is kind of like a better prospect Tony Pollard as far as just better BMI Tony Pollard maybe I should say um so it is an interesting comparison for me personally I think this comes down to where people were putting Travis Etienne before the draft right the expectations I always expected that they were going to bring in a big body whether it was post draft signing a player like Zeke Fournette or grabbing a day three guy and using him more as the big body, the way they use James Robinson early season, I don't think it's going to be the ex to the extent where it's like 10 touches for ETN and 15 touches for the James Robinson type. I think it's flip-flop from there. ETN really worked his way in last season. Um, but he showed us in the three-week stretch where he was getting a full workload, he got hurt. I don't think that's necessarily the best spot, right? With Tony Pollard, a player we were comping him to here, better be my Tony Pollard. He also wasn't the best when he had to handle more than that 50 to 60% of the snaps. Injuries kind of trickled in. So I think with Travis Etienne here, this was good for him, and hopefully he can continue to be an effective back. Hopefully the red zone usage is there for him, and he still catches passes. It's extremely valuable. But to prop Travis Etienne kind of up towards the upper group where the Christian McCaffrey's uh, Jonathan Taylor's of the world. There's a big separation between them and Travis Etienne for me prior, and it still exists. I think Travis Etienne in the short term will still finish as a fringe RB one. I think there's going to be some weeks a little more spiked than other. I think he gives you a good floor, but this was my expectation for Travis Etienne. I think it's still fine to rank him for dynasty because of kind of the age with the rest of the league, somewhere between seven to running back seven to 10 kind of territory. Yep. Um, but for me, Tank was kind of my expectation for them to add a player like this. Maybe where they took Tank was around before I thought, but I still think it's fine. I think it's a smart move. It's a back who, as I said, can do a little bit of everything in the event Travis Eaton gets hurt. I think they'll be fine rolling him out there with, as you said, the hodgepodge of Dearness Johnson, Snoop Hasty behind him. And I, I think he's the clear back up there. But he'll come in, in my opinion, and get 30 to 40% of those snaps next year. So there could be a little more there. And for that reason, I really do like Bigsby. He's in the beginning of the third round frequently i didn't like him when he was early second pre-draft but early third mm -hmm. i'll i'll take the shot on tank bigsby 